Welcome to Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina's Healing Center. Hi, I'm Melinda, Pastor Moore's starter. Welcome to our broadcast. Relax and enjoy our teaching. Amen. Father, thank you for this day. You've been so good to us. You've blessed us with so many good people. We thank you that this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. And we are rejoicing <laughs> and being glad in it. We give you praise for all you shall do here in this service this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We don't think much, you can be seated, we don't think much about the school systems here, but uh, I'd like to pray over our systems this morning. Amen. I want to pray for the children, and I want to pray for the teachers. Amen. To believe God, listen to me, believe God this year, None of our children, none of our teachers will suffer harm in Cleveland and Cherokee County. Yes. Amen. Is that okay? Amen. You want to include Rufflin County in that? Yep. All right. Yes. Please stand with me again and let's pray over this. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I just commit to you now the teachers and the children, especially of this church, that all of this year your hand will be upon them. Nothing, as the Word of God says, nothing by any means shall hurt the teacher or the students. Yes. All of them will be blessed all this school year. And every day they'll thank you, Lord, for your care and your protection. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Yes. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. My son's playing football this year. My grandson's playing football this year. Wide receiver. That sounds like something I might have wanted to do back in my day. But uh, we pray and we just believe God for all of them. You say, well, he's playing football. Won't he get hurt? No. It's, that's, that's his future. <laughs> that's his future. They need a good wide receiver. So he's in training for that right now. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Just look so tight. Just to loosen up a little bit. My wife and I were on our way to church and she started singing that song or quoting the verse. Uh, Blessed is the Lord who, what was it? Honey? This is the day the Lord's made. We rejoice. And I said, well, let's just rejoice. Dear God, we cut in and we rejoiced all the way to the church. And that's the way it ought to be all the time. When you get that urge, just turn it loose wherever you are and enjoy what God has for you. This is the third of a series we're doing on the miracles of Jesus. There are eight of those. We're in the eighth month, you know. So this is the third that we want to introduce you to today. He worked eight miracles that have a definite and a special meaning to you at this moment. The first one we looked at was he fed the 5,000. How many of you remember that one? And he did it with two fishes and five loaves. That's a pretty good miracle, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But what you're teaching there is this. What meaning does that have to me? Well, God can take anything, how small it is. He can, he can provide an abundance for you out of that whatever small, little as much when God gets on it. That's yeah. a verse we put into your spirit. Then, uh, Wednesday night, we taught on the miracle supply. I'm trying to find the book of Psalms 107. The miracle supply. Peter caught a fish, and uh, Jesus was broke. <laughs> Jesus was broke. They didn't have money, enough money to pay their taxes. What would you have done? Well, I tell you what, the last thing you have done is what Peter did. He told Peter, he said, go to fishing. He said, the first fish that you catch, if you'll open his mouth, he'll have some money in there, gold in there. Take that money and pay our taxes. Amen. What did you teach us there? I taught you that God can do anything at all times. When there's not enough money to go around, 
sometimes all you can do is back up and just trust God. Amen. And sometimes he can use the most unusual ways to provide for your needs. Have you found Psalms 107? Yes. I'm still looking. 107, verse 28, I think it is. Yeah, there it is right there. I'm going to read 28 and 29. Then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brings them out of their distress. Say out. Here it is. He calms the storm. You think about what's the worst storm you ever went through in your life. See, we all have storms. So what I'm asking, what's the worst one you ever went through? You notice I said went through? Why do you say that? Because you went through. <laughs> How do you know you went through? Because you're still here. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He calms the storm so that its waves are still. In Matthew chapter 8 of the New Covenant, this is Jesus' third miracle where the waves and the winds and the seas all obey Jesus. Matthew chapter 8. Now that's recorded in Matthew. It's also in Mark and also in Luke. I want to read these three passages and you notice we'll go through. There's just a little difference in each one of them. We're in the 8th chapter of Matthew beginning with verse 23. Now when he got into a boat... His disciples followed him. And suddenly there was a great tempest arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and awoke him saying, Lord, save us, we're perishing. But he said to them, why are you fearful? Well, bless God, if you're in, a, you're in a boat and it's sinking full of water, I believe there's a little bit of fear come on you too. Wouldn't it? Amen. See, they didn't have life preservers back then like we wear today. So why are you so fearful? Oh, you have little faith. Then he arose. And the Bible said he rebuked the winds and the sea and there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Amen. Now look, if you will, in the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 4, we'll read a few verses there. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. On the same day, when evening had come, he, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now listen, that was the word of the Lord. When he said, let us cross over to the other side, that did not mean you're going to go halfway across the sea and drown. He said, we're going to the other side. That's the word of the Lord. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him alone in the boat as he was. Other little boats were also with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. They awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? <laughs> Verse 39. Then he arose, he rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? The final passage, hold your place here in Mark, that's where I'm coming back. But the final passage is in the gospel according to Luke chapter 8. I'll read the account there also. That'll be verse 23. 8, 23. Now it happened. Say it happened. Yeah. On a certain day. 
that he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. So as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake and they were filled, filling with water and were in jeopardy. They came to him and they awoke him saying, Master, Master, we're perishing. Then he arose, rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased. There was a calm. But he said to them, Where is your faith? Say faith. faith. And they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, Who can this be? For he commands even the winds and water, and they obey him. The word was, let us cross over to the other side. I drink to you on that one. Jesus was asleep during the storm. Can you believe that? Well, he was tired. We forget sometimes he was a human. Jesus was tired. He'd worked all day. But just remember where they were going. They were crossing over on the other side of the sea. Do you know who's over there? Gadarene Moniac. The old boy that nobody could handle. That's where Jesus was going. Did the devil know where he was going? Sure he did. So what happened here? Fear had taken over these disciples. They didn't know all that was transpiring. They can just see in the natural. And in the natural, their ship was filling with water and it looked like they were going to sink. The problem is, not the storm, they lost their faith. Yeah. That's the biggest problem I see here. They had lost their faith. God's given to every man the measure of faith. So we always have a resource that we can call up. Faith being that resource that we can always call up. Faith is the greatest thing God ever gave us. Jesus said, have faith in God. We just read through that where it says, have faith in God. Well, what do you have faith in God to do? Who is he to you? What can he do for you? Have faith in God. Well... Can I tell you it's very possible that someone was trying to stop them? Oh, yeah. It wasn't just the wind. It just, it just wasn't the waves. There was something behind this storm that was trying to stop them from getting to the other side. There's a word that we find in all three of these passages. Jesus rebuked. In the first chapter of Mark, don't turn there, just let me read it to you if I can find it. I think it's verse 25. Jesus rebuked him saying, be quiet and come out of him. This is when Jesus was casting an unclean spirit out in Capernaum. What did he tell him? He said, shut up and come out. Be quiet. Come out of him. What did he tell the sea? He rebuked it. Be still. Be quiet. It's just like there was someone behind all the wind and all the waves for whatever they were going through. Can I tell you, there was somebody trying to stop them from getting to the other side. The Bible said Jesus got up. How many of you remember a time when he got up inside of you? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yeah. You know, you sort of sense those times when he gets up. Because you know when he gets up, something good is about to happen. Amen. When Jesus gets up, things are going to change. Something good is about to happen. Yes. Pain is leaving your legs. Yes. When he gets up, things can happen in your life and in my life. And he's always getting up. Can you say amen? Yes. amen. So when the storm was about to sink the ship and take them under... Jesus spoke to the storm. And the Bible said, he said, peace be still, and the storm ceased. I remember in Russia, we tried to talk to a storm, and it didn't work. 
we were already in the field. A big soccer stadium. And I saw, you know, I'm an old farm boy. I was raised on the farm. I saw, I said, it's going to rain. I saw the storm coming. So out of this side of my mouth, I said, whoo, there's a biggie coming. Out of my other side, I said, Lord, turn this thing around. <laughs> you can't be double-minded. How many of you know that? But it, did it rain? Did it rain, Mel? Whoo, whoo, whoo. It rained and rained and rained and rained. But you know what? Nobody left. We were outside. Nobody left. The storm was raging, and we were too. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we gave the invitation, and here they come. I tried to explain to them, go down to the end of the stadium and come down the steps. Shoot, they just jumped over the walls. Here they come. And if it hadn't been for a little fella taking care of mail, they'd have probably crushed her. But he had mail between him and a chair and protecting. Here they come. I'm talking. I'm talking people that have not heard the message of Jesus. People have not heard the gospel. What are they doing? They're responding. They're responding to a God that they're hearing about now. A God that can save them and change their life. And here they come. We gave them special Bibles and all kind of things we gave away that day. So, do you say it works always? Nah, probably don't. And it was more my faith, the reason it didn't work. But you need to try it. Don't let these things just come on you. Amen. I got a call one day. I received a call one day. Uh, they says a tornado just crossed the mountain. It's headed your direction. I said, really? I said, gosh, I've never seen one of these things. I'm going to get out here and see it. Woo, I saw that boy coming. Then tore up my sister-in-law's house. Here it comes. I rebuked that thing in the name of Jesus. God is my witness all at once. It turned left. And went across my pastor. It went on out of sight and didn't hurt anything or anybody. Amen. Hey, you say it works all the way? It didn't work in Russia. There might have been a reason that God wanted to rain on that crowd. I don't know. But it didn't work there, but it worked at my house. Are you listening to me? So when these things move on you, when the storms come, just pray. When a real biggie's coming our way in Blacksburg, my house fills up. Family, children, grandbabies, here they come. What are they doing? They just believe that God's going to take care of the pastor's house, I guess. I really don't know. But he does. He takes care of us. So I want to tell you today... <laughs> You know, all of us have to deal with storms. Now, all those storms are not sent by devils. What's in your plan? What are you planning to do? That'll give you a little bit of information, maybe why that storm is hitting you. You want to help somebody? You want to go minister to somebody? There might be somebody that will try to hinder you or stop you from doing what you feel in your heart that you need to do. So when the storm begins to work and you see it and you hear about it, it might hit your area, then you need to just evaluate what's in your heart right now. Then deal with a source. How do you deal with a source? Well, how did Jesus deal with it? He rebuked it. That means stop. I remember a big old priest that one time put an old big Indian hand up there. Stop. You've come far enough. That's what the word rebuke means. You ever rebuke anything? Oh, we okay this morning. So we all deal with these storms. I heard a song. Um, storms don't last, do they? Any of you ever heard that song? What's the lady who wrote that song? Welling Jennings' wife. Jesse Cole. Jesse. Jesse wrote that song. Storms don't last, do they? And the, of course, the answer is no. They don't last. So when you say, Pastor, do you know what I'm going through? No. I probably can't help you anyway. But I don't care what you're going through. But you know something? Jesus can get up inside of you and he can stop what's going on quickly. 
Are we all right? Yes, sir. See, we're talking about things only God can do. And only you can do when he puts his faith in you to do it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah, when he, when he puts your faith, he puts his faith in you. You can do whatever he did. So there are things that he expects you to do. One of the biggest things that I see about healing that we miss out on, we call people forward and we pray for them. We lay our hands on them, we pray over them. But what we fail to do is tell them to act on what's happened to you now. Do what you couldn't do before. You see, you have to cooperate with God. You have to cooperate with God. You have to put your faith out there, but you have to start doing what you couldn't do before. That's how it manifested in your life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. So this means the storms and situations in your life that make you feel threatened, they can't harm you because of God's protection around you and your household Amen. at peace. You ever walk through your house and speak peace to it? Amen. Yes. Peace to you. Peace to your family. Your whole household. Amen. I speak peace to my house. Peace to the plants that are growing in my house. Storms come. We can't stop that. But I can tell you this. You don't have to tolerate it. Storms come, but you don't have to tolerate storms. You can believe God and pray through them. You can talk to them. You can rebuke them. And you can expect your faith to cause an adverse circumstance quickly to change. You hear me? This is what God can do because he lives in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yes. Now some of you will have to be married 55 years so this will start working for you. <laughs> for some of you, it will start working at 50, so get ready, Joyce. <laughs> it's all about you. It's about your relationship to Jesus Christ. Amen. It's about the faith that he has inside of you. Amen. Jesus talked to things all the time. He talked to fig trees and they died. He talked to dead people and they got up. Amen. See, you can be God's spokesman in the earth. You can speak the word of the Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. So storms come especially when you get interested in wanting to go help somebody. There must be something out there that doesn't want you to witness to that person. I've got 42 seats I'm saving in this place right now. Oh, they tell me they're coming. I said, I'll save a seat for you. But you know what? Those rascals didn't come. They might be something that keeps them away from coming. What kind of devil would like to hear and like you to hear what I'm telling you this morning? You don't have to put up with this. You don't have to put up with all this mess that goes on around you. Well, what do you do, Pastor? Let's stop it. Rebuke it. That's far enough. You don't move any further toward me or my family. You see, whatever I pray for me, I also include my family household in that. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you say amen? Just recognize the source. <clears throat> recognize the source. God would never send anything to defeat you and destroy you. Mm, I feel like I need to say that again. God would never send anything to defeat you or to destroy you, Jerry. Now you'll have to roll your mind a little bit around with that because you've been taught by these false teachers that God might be out to get you. We don't deal with that. There are two things that I never receive in my life. I never receive, listen, punishment for sin. Why would I want to be punished for sin when Jesus was punished for me? Yeah. Why would I want to be punished for something that he was punished for? Mm. Amen. And I never received condemnation. Mm. There is no condemnation. Those are in Christ Jesus. I don't receive condemnation. Amen. Preachers that try to preach condemnation on me, it just goes in one end right after it, and I said bye. Amen. 
I don't, I don't take root to it. You say, well, don't you sin? Oh, yeah. That's why Jesus died on the cross. You understand? I didn't die. He died. He didn't die for his sins. He died for my sin. He buried him in the deepest part of the sea, never be remembered again. Jesus doesn't even know I'm a sinner. Hallelujah, I'm a son of God. I'm in his family. I'm not on the other side. I'm in his family. Yeah, that man's blessed. I'll tell you that right now. But see, you got to be a believer. You got to get saved, born again, follow Jesus, live for Him in His glory. So, be careful of those TV preachers. Can I tell you something else? To receive God's blessing, you don't have to give God anything. I received a letter recently from a man. He said, well, haven't heard from you in a while. said, I was praying for you, and God told me to write this letter to you. See, I know the ministry. There were millions of those letters sent out. You see what I'm saying? Don't let any TV preacher tell you. You want your children saved? Send in $1,000 as a seed faith, and we'll get the job done. Yeah. Amen. Don't follow that teaching. It doesn't cost you anything to open up the windows of heaven over your life except faith. Just believe. Just believe. Just believe. Just believe that God is able to supply all your needs. Believe God can steal all the storms that approach you in your life. Just believe this stuff. My, life, my wife likes those preachers slobber and shake and shout. She likes all that stuff. I don't. <laughs> so she has her TV and I have my TV. <laughs> but see, I don't know what floats your boat. I don't know what tickles your ears. Some of you might like that hellfire and damnation and all of that stuff, you know. I don't, I don't like that stuff because I'm not going to hell. Mm. Why would I want to learn all about hell when I'm not going there? I'm going to heaven. I need to know about all about the Father's house. You see, the most ignorant thing we have in this life is people are ignorant of death. Why? They've been, they've been couched so much in hell they haven't thought about, I'm not going to hell, I'm going to heaven, I need to know all I can about heaven. Yeah. Give God praise in the house of the Lord. A few weeks ago, a man asked me, he's part of the church. He said, uh, you believe in hell? I said, oh yeah. You believe in sin? Yeah. You believe in condemnation? Yeah. What he's wondering is, if you believe in that, why don't you preach it? I believe in that for people that are not saved. You see, if you're not in the family of God, you're in a hell of a shape right now. If you're not in his family. <clears throat> but see, if you're in his family, you all right. We're in the family of God. Amen. Did you know all the way through the new covenant writing, not one time was I called a sinner? That's right. Paul never called the children of God sinners. That's right. I was a sinner and I needed a Savior. Savior. I need a Savior. But once you have that Savior... You're no longer a sinner. What do they call them? Saints. 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 All through Paul's writing, he calls the saved saints of God. Mm -hmm. What is a saint? Called out one, separated one. God yeah. called you out. You didn't choose him. He chose you, hard head. Yeah. And ordained you that you go bring forth fruit. Yeah. You see, there's something down inside of you that 
has always believed in God. Yes. Whatever is hiding it just needs to get out of the way so it can be birthed forth in your life. Yes. You are a son and daughter of the living God. Yes. You are a saint. Yes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That means you're not a sinner. Yes. That means you're not condemned. Yes. Do you know what the word condemn means? You can go in a certain part of Shelby and you'll see an old house there and it'll have condemned on it. And if you find out, there might be a sign in the, on, the, on the door there. Unfit for use. That's what the word condemn means. Unfit for use. Well, you say, I feel condemned. Then you're unfit for use. You should never feel condemned. Because God doesn't have any unfit for use folk. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. You're somebody. I said you're somebody. You're a saint of God. You're going somewhere. You're going to the Father's house. When am I going to get there when he gets through with you here? I don't know how long you're going to be here. You came here with an assignment. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You have an assignment from heaven when you came in this earth. You were wonderfully made. You were deposited in your mama's womb. Some of you, you had to be black to do the will of God. Some of you, you had to be white to do the will of God. That means one's inferior? No, there's nobody inferior there. That's why any of you were here, was it Monday? We did the service here for Bernice. Bernice? Yeah. We had a house full of black folk. And you know, you've got to watch me a little bit. I'll preach some during those funerals. I like funeral services for a child of God. Amen. They graduated here. I said they've graduated. They've been in school here in the earth in graduation time. Why you stay around here? Check out. Go on in. I said, oh, blessed be God, they might be prejudiced in Washington, but they ain't none here. Oh, they shout. Yeah! <laughs> I got to get a shout on that one. Hallelujah. Well, you say, I got a little bit in me. That's all right. Just, just, hey, it'll go. It'll go. It'll go. It'll go. A little bit of your time. It'll go. After a while, you won't see color. Can you say amen? amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I sat beside of a black preacher last night. We talked a little while and I said, I'd like for you to come on and preach for me. He said, I believe I like it. I said, well. We're going to give you an invitation to come and do that. Now, he's a child of God. Amen. He might not have journeyed as far in the spirit as you have. Yes. He might not know everything like you know. You know why? Because he's not had me preaching to him for 40 years. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but, uh, man, it's a wonderful thing. Serving God is good. Amen. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. I have seen some sorry Christians in my life. But I've never seen a Christian that was sorry he is serving God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? That's good, That's good preaching. You said that right. You don't get that just anywhere. It's 12 o'clock. I'm finished. Please stand. Jerry, what are we going to sing, please? He's more than enough. He's more than enough. Now, you heard Jerry give a testimony that he quit seeking healing. He sought the healer, and he was healed. Those of you who have something going on in your body, in your mind, wherever it might be, today, <coughs> quit seeking healing. And just seek the healer. Amen. Look to him. Draw strength from him. Let him be all that you'll ever need. Amen. So I'm going to ask some folks to come forward just to stand up here this morning. Some of the elders stand over here please. Some of the healing room folks just stand over here. There are people here who will pray for you. Now listen. When you pray for people. You put hands on them. Tell them to go ahead and do something I can't do. Tell them to do something I can't do. I prayed for an old boy one time and I said, bless God, run. Shh, there he went. Oh. You know, just tell them to do something.
that you couldn't do while ago. You've got to cooperate with the power of God. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, our website, or if you're local, follow us on Spectrum Cable, Channel 9, 7 p.m. on Tuesdays. Our Lord is building His kingdom. Join us in helping our Lord harvesting souls for His kingdom. Thank you for watching Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina's Healing Center. Visit our website, www.christthekingshelby.org and check us out on Facebook and YouTube. Join us on Spectrum Cable Channel 9 on Tuesday at 7 p.m.